Jesus. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 21, and I'd like to, to share with you about the continuation of what we've been doing here at, at Transform and uh, celebrating with other, with other uh, churches within our city that uh, we, we would like to continue along the, the areas of evangelism and of, and of discipleship, and uh, boy, what an opportunity to share our faith in Christ during this time of the year. You know, Werner Nachtigall, a German evangelist, good friends uh, with, um, uh, with Dieter Rosen, or Dieter and Dirta, came to us a, a few months ago, and um, he's, a, he's a real fired up revivalist and evangelist, and he said, you know what, it's like sharing your faith in Canada, he said, is like a popsicle. Like, it's so, so simple. I know for some of us, we would think, what, really? You know, it's like, I, I have a challenge, but I mean, we're talking man that has traveled the globe, uh, many, many countries, and he said, you know, sharing your faith in America and in Canada, it's, it's not that difficult. They might slap you, they might tell you to F off, but other than that, that's about the extent of our persecution, isn't it, right? But you know what? Go to Egypt and share your faith in Egypt. Go to Iraq. Go to Afghanistan and share your faith in Afghanistan. And, and you're going to find that's where it can be a bit of a challenge. But you know what? I believe that no matter where we are, we need to, we need to blossom. And we need to flourish. And we need to open our mouth. And we need to, what needs to come out of our mouth is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That God would give us a door of utterance that we would boldly proclaim the word of God. And so we want to we share with you here this morning concerning the areas of evangelism, discipleship, and creating an atmosphere. Like this morning, how could you not be happy? You know, when you've got these people bobbing up and down, and I've got the joy, 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 and all that kind of a thing. And, and I mean, you could have come in here super depressed this morning, and I don't know how you could stay depressed, honestly. I mean, then we really would have to pray for you at the end of the service. But, I mean, not saying that that's not legit because there are people that no matter what it looks like, you know, on the outside. But it's easy, it's easy when you're in this kind of a container. And it's just like everybody is like, I mean, you, you may not even know what they're singing. But just the, the fact they're bobbing up and down, you want to bob up and down, right? And, and then, but what, what happens as soon as we get out of this house? Like what happens, you know, during the daily grind, the daily routine, you know, uh, when we get out of here at, you know, 12 o'clock or 12.30 or something like that, and then we, we face the giants in our life. Like that's the reality. That's the reality, my friends. That, that's, that's where we got to, you know, there, there's, a, there's a walk and there's a talk, and they need to be synonymous. Look with me to Revelation chapter 21. It's all the way to the end of the book there. Those of you that don't know, just follow. If you go to maps, you've gone too far. Go a little bit before maps, and then you're going to find Revelation chapter 21. And uh, it says in Revelation 21, 22, but I saw no temple in it for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine at it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb, this is Jesus, Jesus is the light. And the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates will not be shut at all by day, because there's no night there. You know, Mike talked about that on Friday night about, you know, the whole creation and it just, you know, you can't, you can't really comprehend it when, you know, the, 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 the creation of God, as much as we try to understand it, it's just, it's, it's just too big for our brains. Um, and so we just enjoy it. We just literally enjoy it, right? But it says, and in verse 26, they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. But there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life, Revelation 22. And this is actually one of the foundational stones that we have for the nation of Canada, for those of us that are Canadians here, is that there's a redemptive grace on a nation, and the redemptive grace on the nation is found in Revelation chapter 22. In verse 1 it says, He showed me a pure river of, wa of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. 
And, and Revelation 22, 2, it's so easy to remember, 2, 2, 2. Revelation 22, verse 2, is one of the redemptive scriptures that God has blessed us with for the nation of Canada. In other words, God is using this entire nation of 33-plus million people to, um, to express what it says in verse 2, where it says God's using the maple leaf. We've got the maple leaf, you know, um, as part of our, our, um, our flag, the banner that we hang over this nation and it says, it's for the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more curse. Can you imagine a city where there's no curse? No curse. The Bible says Christ has redeemed us in Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law because it says, cursed is every one that hangs on a tree. That was our Lord Jesus that hung on a tree. And it says that we might be brought into righteousness with God because of the curse that he took on him. But it says the throne of God and the lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face and his name shall be on their foreheads. There will be no night there. There's no need, uh, no lamp, nor light of the sun. For the Lord God gives them light and they shall reign forever and ever. Oh, you know, our dear friend, Bert, he's seen that right now. Oh, Lord, soon and very soon we shall see the king. Soon and very soon we shall see the king. But until then, until such a time, it says that we need to occupy, and, and we have some responsibilities. So here's what I'm, here's what I'm challenging us to this morning. We, we, we do believe in this. We believe literally that this is what Scripture tells us. And at the same time, until that time comes, let's flip back to the gospel of Matthew chapter 6. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. And you know what? I appreciate my dad and mom that um, raised me. Uh, uh, memorizing this particular prayer is a prayer that Jesus had prayed. And uh, I think that most of us here in this room are familiar with the, the prayer known as the Our Father. But just look at this, and, and uh, we're not going to break it down, but I do want to share a couple of thoughts there from Matthew chapter 6, and uh, we'll start reading in verse 8. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 8, it says, Therefore, don't be like them, for your Father knows the things that you have need of before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore, pray. So, you know, prayer, we believe, is very, very important. By the way, I'm telling you what, I don't know if I've been in a more Holy Ghost prayer meeting uh, in this church uh, on Friday night. I'm telling you, holy diddle daddles, I was just floored on Friday night, the presence of God. We had around 50, 50 plus, 60 people that were here on Friday night from 10 o'clock at night till 6 in the morning. I'd be the first to confess I didn't make it all the way to the finish line. But, um, but it, was, it was so full of the presence and the glory of God. And a dream has been resurfaced in my heart to get an IHOP going in our city. And, and it was interesting because I talked to a, a councilman in, in the city in, when we were um, celebrating the, uh, the memorial service there for Bert. And he came to me at the end of the, at, in the reception. And he said, you know, Pastor Ken, I need to talk to you about something. And he says, you know what, I had a vision. And he said, I still have this vision. I've worked with this man in the city for years. I won't mention his name, but he's very influential in the city. And he says, the vision is that there would be an IHOP. And he says, and I hope for those of you that don't know what it is, it's International House of Prayer. That God would um, mobilize in this city. And the purpose of the IHOP, the International House of Prayer, would be day and night where people would be worshiping God, seeking the face of God. That is existing in many places around the world. Kansas City um, IHOP founder Mike Bickle has, um, has began that many years ago. And uh, we saw a video of that here just this last week, and we're just amazed at, at how far it's extending to the, to, to the far corners of the earth. But can you picture in your city 24-7 worship and prayer going before God? Talk about an atmosphere, just the presence and the glory of Almighty God. And he said, I saw it. He said, and I saw this building. He said, Ken, I saw this building. That was 15 years ago. He, he reminded me, he said, 15 years ago, I told you, what are you going to do about it? You know, and, and I just humbled myself and said, thank you. Um, but it stirred something on the inside of my heart when Friday night, it was just like, oh, wow, the presence of God, the glory of God, the prayer. Some of the folks that prayed, I was just in awe. It's not often I'm speechless, but that night I was. You know, it was just to hear the precious people, some that had just been born again, just days very short, and here they are worshiping God and praying, and um, I, I, I just couldn't help but believe that the Lord was delighting in his people, and I believe we turned a corner. I somehow believe in the spirit. We turned a corner. We turned another corner, and, 
And I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, Father, unite the church. Unite all the city churches. Unite all hundred churches within our community here. Brad was telling me this morning, what would it be like if we did another three-day assembly at Royal, uh, what do they call it, uh, the stadium, um, the Rotary Stadium or Tradex or something. W- wouldn't, wouldn't you be excited about all the churches coming together for three days of revival? Yeah. I'm telling you what. Um, I, that's, a, that's a rabbit trail. Let's get back to what I'm sharing here. But anyway, I'm, I'm just, I'm really pumped here. Um, Matthew chapter 6. And so di- here's how Jesus describes his, his personal prayer life. He went public with it here. And he says, our Father who, in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, and your will be done on earth as it is in, in heaven. So in other words, it's like until that time that we go, then we have a responsibility, and Jesus prayed this prayer, and just think about what that actually entails, what that means to you and I personally and, in, and, and corporately, when he says, your kingdom come, not my kingdom, not a man's kingdom, but your kingdom, God, your kingdom come on earth, that's this planet right here, as it is in heaven. And if we, if we personalize that and said, Father, I want your kingdom to come, in my life as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And what, what, does that, what does that look like? Show us, Lord, the manifestation of that. Romans 14, 17. You don't have to go there, but let me share with you. The quote goes like this. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is what? Righteousness and peace. And I've got the joy, 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 joy. Okay. So in other words, we need to see those three attributes at least in our personal lives. If the kingdom of God dwells within me, then there needs to be something of righteousness, which simply means right standing, that I have a right standing with my Father in heaven, and that I have that fellowship. Peace, the peace that passes all understanding. In other words, our boat might be going like this, but there's something inside of us which is God, called God's peace. Joy is way beyond winning a lottery. That's when depression starts. You know what? They say most people that win the lottery, significant lotteries, actually do. They, go, they become suicidal. So it's not, it's not making more money. That's not the definition of joy. The Bible says, count it all joy even when you fall into diverse tests and trials and temptations, knowing that the trying testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you'd be mature, complete, entire, lacking for nothing. In other words, joy is way more than external circumstances. Joy has to come from within our gut. And the Bible says that, that, that there's inexpressible joy, full of God's glory. In other words, that's the living epistles that are read and written of all men that God has put on the inside of us. His kingdom is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. I, I, God, I want to manifest that to people that are around about me, that we, that we can create the very atmospheres. You know what, if you don't like your atmosphere in your home, guess what? i got good news for you. You can change your atmosphere. If I don't like the atmosphere in my house, guess what? I'm going to change it. If I don't like the atmosphere in my bank, I can change it. If I don't like the atmosphere in my city, I can change it. We're called to be atmosphere creators and atmosphere changers. In other words, I want to take Revelation 21, I want to inscribe that on the inside of my spirit, on the inside of my life, and I want to say, I want to declare Revelation 21 and 22 on this planet earth while I have breath, while I have life. What would happen if all of us began to do that? See, Jesus was the express image and will of his Father in heaven. In other words, when he came down on this earth 2,000 years ago, he said, I didn't come to do my own will, Jesus' own will. He says, I died to my own will, but I, I came to do the will of him that sent me. Everything that Jesus did, it says that he did according to the plan of the Father. Acts 10, 38 says, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good. Everybody say good. good. I don't know what your definition is, but I think it's a pretty good definition. Good is good. Good is just simply good, Right? He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. The devil's still doing that today in my city, in your city. He's still oppressing. But God says that he anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. God was with him. It says in Luke 10, 19, it says that God has given unto us this treasure. It says that we can tread upon the serpents and the scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. It says in 1 John 3, 8, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested or declared that we would dissolve, that we would loose, that we would, that we would get rid of the, the works of the enemy. 
So we've got this responsibility as an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not a Canadian first. I'm not Swiss first. I'm a Christian first. I'm an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. I was born in Canada. I love Canada. I've got a patriotic heart. I love my Swiss blood, my Swiss background. But more than that, I am an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's who I serve. And we need to represent the, that kingdom. Not this kingdom of Canada. Not this kingdom, this domain of the United States of America. God bless all of that. But there is another eternal kingdom. It's an invisible kingdom that you can't see with the naked eye, but it manifests itself in the natural. And so that's why when Jesus, think about this prayer again, it says, your kingdom come and your will be done. Sunshines, you, you can manifest that kingdom in, in Yale. You can manifest that kingdom in your schools as young people. What would that look like? Think about that, you guys. Going into the University of Fraser Valley College, where, wherever our place, or our sphere of influence is to say that I can represent the kingdom of God. In fact, let's turn again here to Matthew. Um, just go, go left a little bit here. And, and I want to share with you about, about the fact that God has called us in Matthew. I think it's Matthew chapter 5. Maybe it is Matthew chapter 6 where it says that you're the salt and the light. We are the salt and the light. It says that we need to, we need to let our light so shine that it says that, that the people out there in the world will see the works that we do and they will glorify God in heaven. In other words, it's, it's more than just what we say, but there will be a manifestation of what, of, of what we speak. There will be miracles, there will be signs, and there will be wonders. We need to be the salt and we need to be the light. You know, um, we, we just got back, Shar and I, from a ship. And um, we, were, we were doing a, a small little a journey down there. And for my 55th birthday, I wanted to go to a country I've never been to before. So we chose Belize. We were down there in, in Belize, and it's interesting because the ship had, uh, had uh, quite, a few, quite a few people from a different lifestyle <laughs> that were on the ship. And they, they've got this group called LGBTY or something like that, you know, and, and uh, I, probably most of you are familiar with what that group is. They call themselves the Alternative Lifestyle Group. Um, and there was 260 of them that were on the ship. Um, so there's about 7% of the population because they had a big convocation there. I was so excited. <laughs> oh, I was so excited. I said, honey, praise the Lord, we're on the right ship. And Char said, what? I don't get it. Like, what are you talking about? I says, yes, we can let our light shine, praise the Lord. And then so the first thing I do whenever we go on these kind of ships is I ask if there's no chaplain, I, I appoint myself. And um, <laughs> so I, I went down there and, Went down to the front again, and, and sure enough, they, they said, okay, there, there's a, there was an unhosted Bible study that was supposed to be at a certain time. Well, unhosted simply means there's nobody to host it, right? So I went down to check out to say, hey, listen, you know, I'd like to be a chaplain. Could I be a chaplain on this ship? And they said, sure, go for it. And so I became the chaplain on the ship, uh, you know, at least for the first leg of the journey that was, that was on the ship. And wow, oh, we just had so much of his presence, so much of his glory. And I want to share something with you. There's a reason I'm telling you this story. is because the second leg of, this sh of, of the trip that we had, we had around 40 people in this Bible study. Wow. About 40 people that showed up at this Bible study. And um, it just got, it, it started growing. I think if we'd have stayed longer, it would have just, it, it, it would have grown. We met so many Christians on this ship. But, but regrettably, they're what I call secret service Christians. I don't know what it is. It's like when you get into that culture, sometimes it's hard for you to express your faith. And, and I sh that's when I light up. That's when I want to light up. It's like, Lord, put me on. If I'm 60 watt, make me 100 watt. Amen. Like that's when, my, that, that's when your light and my light, that, that's when we need to shine before God. And as a result of that, one man came to us, and, and God bless this soul because it represents so many people in Christianity. He says, you know what, I, I, I have to say, he finally showed up after how many days, right, honey? And he says that, um, I just thought, well, Bible study, you know, uh, what's it going to look like? There's probably only going to be two or three people that are going to attend. And so he, you know, he didn't, he didn't attend there for a few days. And then he shows up and he finds the room absolutely full. 
of Christians that are loving Jesus from, from, from play all over, especially the United States of America. And then he humbled himself and he said, I'm so sorry. He says, you know, that, that I didn't show up, that just because I already had the attitude, well, not a lot of people are going to show up, so I'm not going to be a part of that. And that's often the attitude we as Christians have. We think, well, you know what? It, the giants that are out there are so big. There's, just, there's such a massive amount of work that's out there. Well, who am I? Who am I? Like, what, what little amount of, of light will I be able to contribute when there's so much darkness? Guess what? Here's good news, you guys. Darkness never, never overwhelms light. I don't know about you, but I have an optimistic gospel. Because I, I don't care what it looks like in the end. The Bible says that I have victory through my Lord Jesus Christ. And, and my eschatology is, is a positive eschatology. Not, and it's an eschatology that involves persecution. And I want you to, I want to, tell, I want to tell the audience here, but especially the audience out there, God bless those that are going through persecution. In fact, that's what really makes you and I what we are is when we go through the areas of persecution in our life. That's why it says, count it all joy when you fall into these divers, test trials, and temptations. And so we believe that wherever we are, we can create an atmosphere. Every day we are asking the Holy Spirit, God, give us divine appointments. And he was faithful to give us those divine appointments. I believe that we can, we can every one of us here, that we can have our light shine. In Luke chapter 5, let's go to Luke chapter 5. We've got quite a few scriptures here that I want to share. And, and um, Dana, do we have that, uh, that little video um, that we could show there as we're going to Luke chapter 5? Luke chapter 5. And let's make a difference in your sphere of influence. Luke chapter 5 and in verses 25 to 26. Jesus, again, right in the midst of his ministry, performing miracles and signs and wonders, he forgives and he heals a paralytic. And at the end of the story there, here's this man that, that takes up his bed, goes to his own house in verse 25. Luke chapter 5, verse 25, it says, Immediately he rose up before them, he took up what he had been lying on, and he departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed. And they glorified God. And they were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. In other words, there's other, other stories that are recorded where it says we've never seen anything like this before. We've never seen anything like this before. This here is a place I want to go. One of the countries I want to go is Dubai, United Arab Emirates. And this happens to be in a big, big mall in United Arab Emirates. It's a little American girl. And, um, I, you know, if you can flip it, if we can begin it now. And um, just as... I, you know, uh, there was a season of about seven, eight years where I served as missions director there for Fresh Fire. And that's probably one of the most horrible sounds as far as to hear. You know, when you go to Eastern African countries, Egypt, you know, many of those places. And, and you know, for us as Canadians, we just think it's cute because there's a little girl there. 
And the little girl, she's kind of like, what's going on? What's going on? See, little children are so sensitive in the spirit. They're so sensitive in the spirit. She's picking up and thinking, what is that? What is that? What is it? It's a call for the Muslims for prayer. Calling all Muslims to pray. Calling all Muslims to pray. Five times a day you hear that. So I'd often come into, whether I'm in Kenya, Tanzania, whatever the case is, and I get up in the morning, you're awakened by that at 5 o'clock in the morning, and it's so foreign to our Canadian ears. It's fo so foreign to our North American ears. And here's a little, a little sweet little nation called the United Arab Emirates right in the midst of where there's much, much Muslim activity. And it's little, this, little, this little child here. And I thought, I thought, there's a war. My friends, there's a war that is going on, not just in this nation, but the globe. And I thought, you see, they, they have a secret. Listen carefully, because it's, it's important we get this. They have a secret. They want to fill the airwaves five times a day. Is what that, that's what you hear. Can you imagine the oppression that is over a region when you hear that five times a day? It's like there's a spiritual reformation that God is wanting. There's a wrestling. It says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. And Jesus came from another planet called heaven, and he came down to earth, and he says that I will bring his kingdom I'll bring his fragrance, I'll bring his aroma, I'll bring his culture into this culture here on this planet Earth. And how many you believe that we can affect the atmosphere? We can affect the very atmosphere with the glory of Almighty God. And that's why there's no way, there's no way, my friends, we will ever, ever, ever affect the culture like they do unless it happens from what happened on Friday night. I'm telling you what. I was so excited. I was so elated. I was so blessed to hear that there's people that still want to pray. And prayer's not boring. It's like somebody says, prayer's not boring. You're boring. <laughs> prayer's not boring. If, I, if Ken says prayer's boring, Ken's boring. Because if I get a revelation of who Jesus Christ is, if I get a revelation of what that kingdom is, Colossians 1.20 says, Christ in me, the hope of glory. I got him in me. I'm born again, not of flesh, not of the will of man, but by the Spirit of God. The Bible says, if any man or woman is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We're called as ambassadors of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That's why we want an IHOP. Can you imagine around the clock where worship and prayer and incense before God is coming, this, this ascending and descending, and that we create this spiritual atmosphere within our city. That's why I said if we don't like things that are going on in our city, then we can change it. Go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. If, we can, if one can do it, the Bible says two is better than one. The Bible says that one can put 1,000 to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. You see, what we want to do, my friends, is that we don't want to raise a bunch of professionals. We've got some so-called professionals in here, and, 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 and I'm even saying that somewhat flippantly because, you know, there's Pastor Mike, and there's, there's you know, 77-year-old Mike Carey here, and so we've got, we've got a number of so-called professionals here. You know what? We don't want to raise more professionals in that aspect. We want the whole body to be equipped. What, what would it look like if we would mobilize the entire body of believers so that every one of us would be doing what God's called us to do? Every one of us is participating in, in, um, in, in Matthew chapter 10 where it says that we'll lay hands on the sick and that they shall recover, that we'll cast out devils. What would it look like if the whole body was mobilized? That's our, that's our heart's cry. In Ephesians chapter 4 is that we are going to equip the saints so that they do the work of the ministry. The whole body of Christ is going to be edified. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, look at what it says here. The Philistines gathered their armies together to battle, and they were gathered at uh, Soko, which belongs to Judah. They camped between Soko and Azekah in Ephes, Damon, and Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together. They camped in the valley of Elah, and they drew up in battle array against the Philistines. They stood on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side with a valley between them. And it says there was a champion 
Again, this story is not new to most of us. A champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Now, I don't know what your translations say, but, but you know, as I was doing commentary on this here last week, uh, so here stands Goliath, and Goliath was a champion, which literally means in the Hebrew, it means a go-between. In other words, that was often what happened in that day when there was, uh, when there was battles that would take place. They would take a go-between that would, that would represent their particular army and say that we will go on behalf of this army, and if we win, then you serve us, and then if, if we lose, we serve you. So he's coming out, and, and I, I got to figure, I mean, who's the tallest man in the NBA? I don't know what he would be, but he's seven foot something, isn't he, right? But here's Goliath. Goliath would be in an entire different league that would be on the, the NBA because he was nine foot nine. So here's a man that was almost 10 feet tall. He was, he was, he was different. He was, a, he was a monster, right? In fact, it says his cloth of armor, his, his main armor was 125 pounds. That's just about heavier than me. I mean, just think about that, right, you know? And... Um, <laughs> And, and it says that, 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 his, that, that the shaft, in other words, the, 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 uh, the focal point of his spear that he had behind was 17 pounds. I mean, this guy had more armor weight on him than most of us are, are, are you know, ourselves, our, our own weight. And here comes this, this giant of a man, and here's David. And uh, I just love this story, one of my favorite stories in the Bible. But just look at, I, 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 I'm sharing it for a reason here. You know, pay attention to this. It says, a champion went out from Goliath, I mean, from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath, whose height was, was nine foot nine. He had a bronze helmet on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze, and he had bronze armor on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now, the staff of his spear weighed 600 shekels, and a shield bearer went before him. And he stood and he cried out to the armies of Israel, and he said to them, Why have you come out to line up for the battle? Am I not a Philistine? And you are all servants of Saul? They were expecting Saul to go out. Remember, Saul was, was kind of head and shoulders above anybody else in the army. So the people were expecting Saul go out there and, and you know, give this guy a licking. Well, you know what? Saul wasn't about to go out. And it says, um, he, he says, uh, I'm not, uh, am I not a Philistine, you servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves. Let him come down to me. If he's able to fight with me and kill me, we'll be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill, kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy uh, he, he, see, this is, what the, this is what the enemy is telling us today, my friends. You know, Satan, Lucifer, is telling us, I defy the armies of Israel. I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Give me a man that we will fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Is that the atmosphere that's in our churches today? Is that the atmosphere in the Christian church in the nation of Canada? Is that the atmosphere in our, na in, in, in our, in our cities within this nation? It says here, give me this man. See, we think, well, we're outnumbered. We're outnumbered. There's so many that are out there. And we look at the circumstances and what they look like in the natural. Now, David, verse 12, it says he was the son of that Ephraim of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, who had eight sons. Let's go through, we won't go through all the names there. Verse 16, it says, the Philistine drew near and presented himself. I couldn't help but think about the call of the, of the, uh, of the Muslims to pray. Five times a day, serving around the world. And even, even most recently, what is happening with ISIS and the atmosphere that is presenting itself even within America and within Canada. And it's, it's my friends, it's time for war. We're called to war. I don't know about you, but if you thought you just joined a party, I'm not saying you haven't, but it's a different kind of party. Because what the enemy has tried to do is he's tried to divide, he's tried to divide, he's tried to divide the body of Christ. And what would happen if the church united? What would happen if the church said that we are going to be one? We are going to be champions. We're going to be one. And as a result of that, we have a common enemy. It's not my church up the road. It's not the church or the denomination across the street from us. Our common enemy is the enemy, Satan. And it says that we can defeat him, and he's already a defeated foe. Can you say amen to that? Amen. We're in a serious day. We're in a serious time. Forty days, morning and night. Forty days. What's the enemy speaking to your head in the morning? And what's the enemy speaking to your head at nighttime? What are some of the thoughts 
own some of the thoughts that are processed through your mind and through my mind in a day. See, we have authority over that, my friends. We can choose what we want to believe. We can choose what we think. The Bible says, finally, my brethren, think upon these things that are pure, lovely, honest, just, good report. If there's faith and virtue in them, think upon these things. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, this book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth, but I'll meditate therein day and night. In other words, Joshua understood the importance of meditation in the word of God. Not just in the evening time, not just once a week, but he said in the morning and at night time. And he says that you'll observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then you will deal wisely in the affairs of life and you will have success in life. There's a, there's a room full of champions here today. There's a room full of Davids today. And God has spoken and prophesied that we will take some of the giants down even in our nation. Even in the nation of Canada. But it means a completely, completely surrendered life. That we've got to give them our all. I love this. And it says, so David hears this. But every day in the morning, can you imagine, you know, that, that kind of garbage, that kind of crap, that kind of vomit that's coming on us. And that's, how, that's, that's literally what happens. Many of us, we, we go through those challenges, through, through, the, through those struggles every day. And verse 17 says, Jesse said to his son David, take now the four brothers and Ephah and some of those, go and help your brothers out. But David was there for more than just that purpose. He rose early in the morning in verse 20. He left the sheep with the keeper and he took the things uh, and went as Jesse had commanded him. He came to the camp as the army was going out to the fight and shouting for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had drawn up in battle array, army against army. And David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper, ran to the army, and he came and he greeted his brothers. Then as he talked with them, there was the champion... The Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines. And he spoke according to the same words, and David heard them. David heard them. David heard finally. Well, who is this guy? I mean, he was just doing his thing, right? Now he's got to help his brothers. And he hears for the first time the language that was spewing forth out of Goliath. And it wasn't good. And all the men of Israel, in verse 21, when they saw the man, fled from him, and they were dreadfully afraid. It's interesting. At first it says they were dismayed, distressed. Now it's they were dreadfully afraid. Dreadfully afraid. So the men of Israel said, haven't you seen this man who's coming up? Surely he's come up to the... Interesting. The whole atmosphere is charged, but it's not with the right spirit. The whole atmosphere is charged. What can we, as light and salt, do in my community? How can we affect our sphere of influence? My friends, we have the ability to change and create atmospheres. This is the glory of God I'm talking about. Christ in me, the hope of glory. I got heaven inside of me. You know, it's not that I'm not looking forward one day to go to heaven, but I want heaven in me right now. I want to be a living epistle read and written of all men. I want... I, I want heaven to come out of me. When you squeeze me, I don't want to cuss you out. See, when you squeeze me, I want Jesus to come out of me. For the sake of time, here's David asking this question, verse 26. David spoke to the men who stood by him saying, what will be done for the man that kills this Philistine takes away the reproach from Israel? You know, this is just ridiculous. Here's a young whippersnapper, David. Now, I don't know his story, and pretend you don't as well. You and I don't know that this guy took the lion. And you and I don't know that this guy took the bear. You know, I, I, I've been to safaris before, and I've seen lions in the wild. I have been so close to a lion, you guys, that I could see, I could see the flies on the lion's nose. That's how close I had. I, I could, uh, in fact, I could, I could have touched lions when I went to safari. That's how close I got to lions. You know why I felt safe? I was in the safari van. And the windows were up. That's why I felt safe. But that's literally how close. When you see a lion in the wild, I tell you what, the hairs on the back of your head just stand up. This, this beast, this power. And he was just sauntering around looking for his water hole. And there we saw that lion. And think about this in, in God, in God. David takes the lion out. David takes, we're a little more familiar with the bear story because we have them in Canada. And, and, and here's a man that in covenant with God, one man that's in covenant with God. 
Look at the language that came out of David's mouth. Everybody else is so bound up with fear. And see, fear paralyzes your tongue. Fear has its way of just gripping us that that we don't know how to release the power in the presence of God. But when faith rises up on the inside, God says he's given every man, woman, and child the measure of faith. Listen to this. If this doesn't boggle your mind, what does? It says, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, God has ordained strength that the enemy and the avenger would be stilled. Even out of a child, out of an infant, out of a, out of a, uh, out of a little baby, it says that God has ordained strength. Because out of a child comes forth perfected praise. I believe there's a test even before us. This is not to manip- manipulate any one of us. But it's like, what are, the test before us is, what are we going to do with the nursery downstairs? How important is that to us? Because God wants to raise up an army, and and unfortunately, I should say fortunately, it's not just going to be young people. It's not going to be just old people. God wants to raise up an army of, of generations together for the glory of Almighty God, right? Look at this. I mean, his own brothers got upset at him, didn't they, right? They basically said, go home to mama. But Saul said, and in verse 33, he says, Saul said to David, you're not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. You're a youth. And he's a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, he went out after it and he struck it and he delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it rose against me, I caught it by the beard and I struck and killed it. I just love that. It's really, really did happen. Your servant killed both the lion and the bear and this uncircumcised Philistine. This uncircumcised, he says, he's not part of the covenant. Who does this guy think he is? He wasn't overwhelmed by the fact, yeah, 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 but he's 9 foot 9 and he's got a 120 foot, uh, you know, coat of armor as far as that he's, you know, and he's got this, this, this many trophies here. No, he just, he called him what he is, an uncircumcised Philistine. And he's going to be like one of them seeing that he's defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he'll deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, go, oh boy, and the Lord be with you. What was Saul saying? So Saul clothed David with his armor, and he put a bronze helmet on his head, and he clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor, tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I can't walk with these, for I've not tested it. So David took them off. The story gets crazier, doesn't it? Then he took his staff in his hand, and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook. And he put them in a shepherd's bag and a pouch which he had had, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. So the Philistine came and he began drawing near to David, and the man who bore the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. In other words, he cursed him, for he was only a youth. In other words, he was so humiliated, he was saying, how dare you, you know, bring this, this young little uh, sapling in my presence. And he said, am I a dog that you've come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, come and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. I love you, David. It says in verse 45, David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword. You come to me with a spear. Well, let me tell you something. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. Hallelujah, shandala rundala. And it says, whom you have defied, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Canada. How many believe there is a God in Canada? There is a God in my nation. But, Ken, have you heard about the giants of abortion? Have you heard about the giants of euthanasia? I heard. I have heard. But let me tell you something. I've also heard that there are, there are giant slayers in Canada. And some of them attend Transform Central on 2413 McCallum Road. And they've defied the armies of God. So we're going to rise up, not with a sword, not with a javelin, but on our knees. And we are going to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Even when they tell us that we can't do it, we're still going to praise God. We're still going to worship God. More than just in the secret place, that's where it starts. But we're going to go public. And you tell me that I can't preach Jesus, thank you. 
Because if you tell me I can't preach Jesus, all the more I will preach Jesus. Look at what one man did to change an atmosphere. Think about it, my friends. One man that took a negative, fear-based atmosphere and said because he had covenant language with God. Doesn't matter your stature in the natural. Doesn't matter if you got a degree in this, that, and the other thing. All of that might be wonderful, but that's not what took down the giant. The power of the Holy Spirit of God. Wow. And it happened. So the Philistine, verse 48, it says, He arose and he came and he drew near to meet David, that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Then David put his hand in his bag. You know what? We, I, I went to that place in Israel. You know, and again, I, you know, it, it, there's not 100% certainty that that's actually where the battle took place, but they're pretty, pretty certain. And, and I picked up five smooth stones. I still have them in my office. I use them every once in a while as reminders. As reminders to say, enemy. And I'd never be able to get them in my luggage case today to bring them back to Canada today, I'm sure. But that many years ago, I, I, I went down and in faith, I picked up five smooth stones. And I, and I, I, I put them in my suitcase and I thought, the, think about this. I should have even brought them here, honey. Eh? Uh, these five smooth stones that, that this literally took out the enemy. See, that it's, it doesn't even make sense. And I'm not saying that he wasn't skilled. Because especially the Benjamites said that they could, they could hurl a rock with both their left hand and their right hand at the same speed. So that was enough to, to, to crush a man, to sink that, that rock into his head. So I'm not saying that that natural ability wasn't there. They were skilled warriors, skilled warriors. But we need to understand something. It's not by might, not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And I'll tell you what, when, when we've got a house full of prayer warriors, a house of, you know what, my friends, we have to get into the word. We've got to let this word, you've got to eat this word, digest this word, let this word work and, and walk and talk within your life. We need, to, we, need to, we need to eat the scrolls like the prophets of God did. So that, like I said, no matter what circumstances you and I are going through, that, that when we're squeezed, the word of God comes forth. And let's just finish it because it looks so good here. It is good. Verse 51 says, Therefore David ran, stood over the Philistine, took his sword, drew out its sheath, killed him, and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, what did it say? They fled. In other words, there, there was so much fear that was around there, but the fear turned a corner. It says, The men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted, What happened? An atmosphere literally changed. An atmosphere change. You can change your atmosphere. My friends, we can change our atmosphere. We just don't have time, but you know what? Is it what time is it? Eleven o'clock? Good. Okay, it's only eleven o'clock. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Can 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 we show can we show that uh that uh, video again? I I, I want to show this. You know what? The, this only got half done, but I must share more because it, it's so it's so powerful. Here's an atmosphere, you guys. This was in Miami, Florida, and it's a band that, um, that we love to listen to. And we, in fact, we, we listen to some of these guys here from Australia. It's a group from Australia. And there was over 30,000 people that assembled together, and this is called Atmosphere. This is called atmosphere. This is what it's all about. I just, I absolutely just love this. Maybe this is not your style of music, but nonetheless, I believe it, it changed Miami that day, that night. Because it leaves a residue, one of the most significant ways to change atmosphere is through praise and worship. And we'll get into some of that next week. But let, go ahead there, gentlemen. And if we can, if we can play this. This was happening Friday night here. Why don't we stand up? Let's stand up to our feet. They're worshiping God with all of their heart.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Miami will never be the same. Praise the Lord. There's how we're going to change atmospheres, my friends. And on, on Friday night, there was so much of the presence of God. You see, God's not concerned about big numbers, small numbers. He's concerned about people who have given their lives over 100% over to God and what that looks like. And I believe that we're creating, we're creating portals in the spirit. And we're saying, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And this week as we go out there, let's change our atmospheres. If we don't like what's going on in our city, guess what? Good news. You have the ability and I have the ability to make a change. Because of Christ in us, the hope of glory. Father, we can do it. We are the champions of this hour. We are that you've called us to be sons and daughters of the Most High God. So, Heavenly Father, just grab somebody's hand and let's just, let's just, as a sign of our unity in the Spirit, Father God, here's an army. Here's an army. Lord, you see this as the army of the living God. And Lord God, we're saying we want to make a difference. Lord, it was no mistake that you put us on the planet for such a time as this. And Heavenly Father, we're the ones, we're the carriers of the light of Jesus, we're the carriers of the anointing and of the glory of Almighty God. May we spread the glory of God all around about us, O oh Lord God, wherever we are. Send us out, Lord God, as ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we're not here to represent our kingdom, but the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Almighty God. And we give you praise, Lord God. Lift fear, Lord God, out of our environment. Lift fear out of our homes, O oh Lord God, and let it be filled with faith, O oh Lord God. Faith in the living God, vibrant, where your kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, invade our houses, invade our businesses, invade our streets, invade our malls, O oh Lord God. Lord, let us go out there with a torch the fire of the Holy Spirit of God, that we will make a difference, Lord God, not by might or power, but by the Holy, Holy, Holy Spirit. God, we give you praise for giving us a word to speak in season, O oh Lord God. Fire us up on the inside, Lord. Baptize us in the Holy Ghost and fire, Lord God. Consume us, Lord God, we pray. Lord, that we would decrease, but that God, that you would increase. And we bless you, and we thank you, Lord God, for that. In Jesus' precious name, and everybody said, amen. amen. Hallelujah.